And welcome back to Becoming the Channel, the podcast. Today, we're diving into a fascinating topic, the distinction between self-awareness and self-consciousness, especially in the realm of high-ticket sales and managing financial resources. In this episode, we'll explore how being in a state of flow signifies self-awareness, where you're absorbed and engaged in the activity, contrasting the inhibiting nature of self-consciousness. This year is all about transcending self-consciousness to achieve self-awareness, especially in writing impactful copy and in conducting meaningful sales conversations that significantly boost your financial gains. We'll also delve into how self-consciousness might be a lower frequency version of self-awareness. Initially, many of us start off as self-conscious people, but eventually we evolve into a heightened state of self-awareness. Elise Bassine is joining us today. You'll know her. She's a spiritual leader, channel, and breathwork expert, and she's going to share her insights on preparing the channel for wealth consciousness, which is an essential aspect of successful high-ticket sales. This preparation involves not just physical aspects like food, nutrition, and sleep, but also mental and spiritual readiness, such as trusting yourself and your intuition. We'll also talk about the importance of crystals on this journey, serving as tools for grounding, programming, and even drawing out lower frequency energies from our fields. So buckle up, buttercup, a journey from self-consciousness to self-awareness, preparing your channel for wealth consciousness, and unlocking the secrets to successful high ticket sales awaits. Let's get started. Okay. So we're talking about the difference between self-awareness and self-consciousness, which I think is a very important distinction. Well, especially when we are talking about the art of high ticket sales, holding more financial resources and so on. So I wanted to share that when I was a kid, and I was learning how to play basketball. I was very self-conscious. I was aware of everything that was going on around me, trying to figure out this game that I was supposed to be playing and that I would become quite good at. Um, but at the time, I was not. Or you could look at it like remembering when you were learning how to drive or something like that. Anything where you had to be conscious of every single movement, every single step in the process. And I think that that is what happens with us in our marketing efforts and our writing copy and so on, when we have this self-consciousness in part, it is a learning curve. We have to learn how to write. So for example, if you have ever in a, in a poetry class been, been asked to write a poem in a haiku form, well, when you know the haiku form, which is five syllables, seven sil syllables, and then five more syllables, it makes the whole process a little bit easier. So by creating scaffolding, for ourselves around the copy that we write, around our sales conversations and, and things like that, then we have the opportunity to move from self-consciousness into self-awareness, where I can be aware of myself moving through, I know I've used like seven different analogies here, but moving through the basketball game or moving through driving a car or moving through writing a haiku, but it's not taking me out of the flow of it. When you are in flow, you are going to be self-aware, but you are also going to be absorbed and engaged in whatever activity you are doing. That is, in essence, what this, this year is about in terms of writing copy that converts or in terms of having important sales conversations that create massive inflows of money into your bank accounts, moving from self-consciousness into self-awareness. You know... What's occurring to me too, as you're talking, is it's almost like self-consciousness is like the lower frequency of self-awareness because I know for me, um, I know I have a very high level of self-awareness, but I think it started as being incredibly self-conscious, which then like as you evolve that um, it just can like alchemize into a very high level of self-awareness. Yes. And in fact, I know you don't like to talk about the brain all that as much as I do anyway, but as it turns out that on the Neo personality profile, self-consciousness is one of the facets that's in neuroticism and neuroticism is a, is in effect all based in the brain. So the self-consciousness, it's like, there's a little, in fact, I would say that there probably is a little, we'll call it a program, but it might be like even a microchip 
that takes you out of, that disrupts the self-awareness, disrupts the flow, and isn't that convenient? So maybe we just perhaps, it's as simple as dissolving the chip. Yeah. And, and, you know, it really goes back to, to like not being concerned with how other people are perceiving you because that's Mm -hmm. really what self-consciousness is, Mm -hmm. is the worry of, you know, how other people are perceiving you or what they're going to think or how they're going to react to you. Oh, yes. And so this is interesting because what ends up happening when you're, when you're overly self-conscious and you're overly aware of what everybody else is thinking and overly sensitive to that. And you know that you're supposed to be self-confident, that you're supposed to be self-aware, that you're supposed to be shining your brightest light. What, it, what it ends up happening is that there's a distortion in the confidence and it comes off as bravado. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. like you're play acting confidence mm-hmm. rather than right. embodying confidence. Yeah. So do you see how this all is coming back to the the confidence piece, the third chakra, my hands keep going to my belly. This, this activation center is so important this year. It is one of the most critical of all of the mm-hmm. activations is to this, this, um, this region of the body. Yeah, no, that makes so much sense and I can feel it. And it's, it's interesting too, because, you know, I, I struggle with heartburn, which always is right there in that area. Um, and I've been finding it really interesting over the last few months when I'm in these states of, you could call it flow or being super present or also just not being at odds with myself, right? Like just being very much in, um, just being, yeah, just being, um, that's when I don't seem to have heartburn Mm -hmm. is during those times. So it, oh, it, yes, this is wonderful for you, actually, because it's um it's a built in red flag. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 But, oh, I'm just not in my full the fullness of who I am. My yeah. red flag is not heartburn, but mine is when I start feeling when I start feeling I'm going to use this word because it's what comes into my head when I feel fat. And mm-hmm. I know that I am not fat and everyone yeah. is meant to have adipose tissue on our body. So that is not it. But when I feel fat, that is a signal to me that I am not fully in my body. Yeah. Yeah. I totally get that. And that's interesting too, that we've been so programmed around, you know, our bodies and being mm-hmm. fat and self-conscious and all of that mm-hmm. stuff. Yes. Yes. So this is the year that we wipe self-consciousness off the map. Mm, I love that. I love that. I do too. Very well, (laughs) actually. And that means even for the channels, because there are those of us who, you know, have been channeling for a while, but there's always that question mark about what will people think of me or Mm -hmm. what, what if I actually just speak from, allow my channel to come in and speak, what will people think of me and so on. And so even that has got to be, I'll say, eradicated because there's no place for it. Yeah. And then what would you say? So, um, you know, to kind of like bring this all full circle, like what would you say about preparing the channel? You know, because mm-hmm. I know you're going to be teaching that, but also like, because I know so many people and so many people that are coming into my world and your world, like they know that they are a channel, but it's just about refining it. Like I literally just had a call with one of my clients um, who's in the sacred six figure initiation, which is about channeling for your business. And she had this crazy experience over the holiday where her channel opened and this course came through and all of these teachings came through And now she's just like, whoa, like, what do I do with this kind of a Mm -hmm. thing? So what would you say to somebody who like you, they know they're on the precipice of channeling or they just started channeling? Like, how do we either prepare the channel or continue to, you know, cultivate it and, and do what we need to do as the, as the info comes through? So preparing the channel is much like if you were to prepare your body to become pregnant or prepare your body for a marathon or to prepare, whatever, but any kind of preparation requires 
attention to certain details. And so, of course, preparing your physical body for channeling is multifaceted and it involves food and nutrition, it involves hydration, water, sleep, sunlight, all of the things that we already know we're meant to be doing to do them. But it also, there in all, here's the thing about becoming the channel for me was that I studied channels for years, literally years. I was fascinated by channels and I spent an entire, yeah. were you? Same. Oh yes. my God. Yeah. So I remember being introduced to Abraham Hicks, probably around the same time you were because we came online at the same time. So yeah. being fascinated by it and at once waiting for somebody to tell me that it would be okay for me to be a channel because that is what I am. Mm -hmm. It was as though I was waiting for permission. And in fact, I had, I spent an entire session of my very high level coaching with Jennifer Longmore to talk about somebody else who said that she was channeling and I didn't believe her. And I was so put off by it. And I just couldn't like, I was, Jennifer finally said, you you realize you spent an entire hour talking about somebody else, right? <laughs> <laughs> But I was so upset by it at the time. And finally, where I landed, thanks to that conversation, was when Jennifer said, it's time for you to finally admit that you are a channel. And I felt such relief from that, but I had to understand what that meant. And so we have to understand what it means to be a channel. And then we don't need external permission to say that we are one. But there is something about confirming your, I'll call them characteristics or traits, that would indicate that you have the capacity to channel, that you're not just making it up in your head. Mm -hmm. And to go along with that then in preparing the channel is learning to trust yourself, learning to trust yourself and learning to trust that what comes through you is accurate and true. The way that that can happen is when you're actually doing the things for your body that allow things to come through that are accurate and true versus being mm -hmm. muddied by the nonsense that's going on in the world or over overwhelmed by other people's thoughts, opinions, attitudes, and so on. So there's a lot that goes into it. And I'm eager to be able to share that with people on uh, preparing the channel, uh, which is going to be my first. It's a, it's a little bit of a experiment, isn't it? Because I'm going to be doing it on Voxer as a community. And I've never done that before, but I'm eager to have that experience. Oh my gosh. I love that. I love, um, I love doing things on Voxer and I love doing things on audio um, it's just very enjoyable. And I also enjoy because as a channel, a lot of times things just come through at these random times and it's so much better to be able to share them in real time mm -hmm. versus having to wait, you know, till next week when you have your call, <laughs> you know, yes, it's so yes. much better. And it also is reflecting how we're changing, right. As, as people, as we are on this on this ascension journey, we are wanting things asynchronistically. Mm -hmm. And in fact, it's funny with Boxer, um, I just received a message from a colleague and she was sharing something that was very emotional and she let me know it was going to be very emotional, but exactly at the time when she was delivering this information that was emotional, she said, oh, I am becoming emotional. And I said, and I was becoming emotional at the same time. So even though it was asynchronistic, it was still happening simultaneously. Mm -hmm. It was fascinating how that works. And I think that takes us out of the, the, um, the TikTok timeline. And I don't right. mean that the app, I mean, like literally the, the, yeah. the, um, the clock timeline and puts us yeah. into real time, which is timelessness. Yes. I love that. Yes. Yay. So is there anything else uh, that Marisol would like to share mm. that we would need to know or anything else that's important right now? So she keeps on drying my eyes. I have these um, crystalline patches that I wear mm -hmm. and um, they're called LifeWave. I've mm -hmm. used them for years, but one of the things that she has had me do recently is program them because they're crystals. Mm -hmm. They can be mm -hmm. programmed. And so whether you're using patches on your body to program you to a certain frequency program, meaning just remind your body that you're operating on that frequency, or if you're using actual phys like big physical crystals, like I've got my rose quartz here that I've been holding the whole time. These, these mm -hmm. allies of ours continue to be 
to play a role in the ascension process and in the, I'm going to say, pursuit of self-confidence, of really truly trusting your channel, trusting yourself, being confident in your message. The crystals are here to help us. They are here to support us. And this is something that I don't want us to overlook as we move forward. Um, the crystals have also been hijacked in terms of, you know, what do we use in our computers and in our, you know, smartphones and in our smartwatches and all of those things are also crystals. And they've been programmed in a way that is counter to what they were intended, not by any fault of their own. It's not the crystals that are the problem, of course. So we just want to be able to use this technology more and more so that we have access to the proper mm, frequencies that are available to us that they will actually help us amplify those frequencies to keep our, our channels pure and clear as well. I love that. It's making me think of um, there's – so you know how um, – like if, if you have like a queen or a king's crown is like gold and then it like has stuff that sticks up with different like gems and stuff in it. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, back in whenever the, the kings and queens were seen as the ones that were divine, like they were connected to God and they were able to speak to God. And it was actually through the gold and the crystals that were like forming an antenna yes. that they were able to communicate with the divine. Yes. So the crystals are actually a technology and also like why we've gold plated them where why Matt has gold plated them with mind goods is because that amplifies the energy. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. So that is really important for people to understand that these are like, you know, a technology that we can use to, to assist us, you know, and like I have my, uh, my sword here that my selenite sword that I can cut down any thoughts or ideas or, or beliefs that are coming that are not aligned with my highest timeline and who I want to be. I just cut it down and it's a very helpful tool. So, um, I love that. And I think that that's really important for people to understand that you can, use the assistance of, you know, these crystals. Yes. Because to your point about everything needs to be very practical and grounded. Yes. There, there's nothing more grounded than a crystal. That is true. That's and so, so true. we, whether, Oh, here, Oh, this is interesting. I would be curious that in terms of what Selena would have to say about this, the use of crystals to I'm sending a telepathic message because I don't know how it comes through. The use of mm -hmm. crystals to, I'm going to say, codify your programs. Mm -hmm. In other words, to realize the programs, to bring them fully in. Does this make sense? Mm -hmm. I'm not saying yeah. it properly. What does Selena say yeah. about that? Like to, well, it's also like to reprogram, but it's also like to bring your full, oh, it's like the restoration of like your original coding the and the original templates like the crystals can help to yes. solidify that into your into your system and then also the other thing i was seeing as you were talking to is like the crystals can also help to draw out the darkness too so anywhere where there's like um you know lower frequency energy in your field the crystals can help to draw that out of your field so that you can hold more light i love crystals yeah. <laughs> Always um, have. Always have. <laughs> I know. So thank you. Thank you, Marisol, for sharing all of that. And um, yeah, we'll we'll share with everyone where they can find you. But is there anything else you want to share? I know you have um preparing the channel, which is super exciting. Mm -hmm. And we'll share. I, I yes. know you'll share it too, but we'll share the information about that. And everybody's like, how is preparing the channel related to high ticket sales? Well. <laughs> we have to know how to channel wealth consciousness, don't we? Because so much of high ticket sales is about being able to attract, receive and hold wealth, especially yeah. financial prosperity. So this is all preparing the channel for wealth consciousness to and also to hold your highest level of highest, most actualized self. But when it comes to high ticket sales, this is a key component to being able to regularly make the high ticket sales. So that is mm -hmm. the, 
if I were to build a bridge, that would be the bridge that I would want to build that, before we that say goodbye. Makes, yeah, that makes perfect sense. Yes. I love that. Thank yes. you. You're welcome. Well, thank you so much for being here. And um, I know everyone's going to love it. Same. Thank you. Bye.